back we are glad you're watching in fact thanks a lot for even interacting with us on our social media platforms at k24 tv on instagram facebook and twitter karibu sana to alpha j if you just tuned in my name is shiko kaitani of course sir uh, we are still giving you nuggets of what is to come right here on k24 if you're wondering what is victor olo pascal tokodi betty chalo doing well trust me there's a big change coming to k24 this friday from 7 p.m if nobody told you so <laughs> you need to be sure to tune in on a Friday to be exact to see what big changes are coming when we talk about entertainment, how we deliver our news from sports and even music, you name it. It's all going to change the way you view television. And trust me, K24 is going to be delivering big time. But that being said, it is Wellness Wednesday. And today we continue to talk about that silent killer called depression. In fact, uh, just last year, the World Health Organization actually ranked Kenya as sixth with the highest number of depression cases among African countries. We're talking about numbers as 1.9 million strong. And by the way, suicide is the second leading cause of death amongst the youth between the ages of 15 to 29. And so, of course, that conversation never gets old. And uh, today on the show, we still have um, uh, a few individuals who are here uh, to make a change in our society. Uh, still with me and right next to me is Emily Wairimo. She is the founder of Art Heal Foundation. Um, uh, at the center is Onyango Otieno, a mental health advocate. And we do have psychologist Maren Chunga still in studio with us. Keep those questions, those comments coming. We'll be sampling them in just a minute. Okay. Okay, welcome back, guys. Onyango, um, I want to find out because uh, earlier on, for those who are just tuning in, uh, just to keep them um, up to speed, you talked about how you were depressed um, as a teenager. How was your depression manifesting itself? How were you expressing yourself um, mm. during those, those days? Well, I grew up being told to keep quiet. Yeah. And the fact that I didn't have an outlet mm -hmm. to express myself yeah. meant all that energy kept getting circulated inside me. Yeah. And those were just storms brewing. Yes. Um, and it got to a point that I couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like, it's like I snapped. Yeah. So I, I ran away from home. Oh. I became a street boy. Really? Yeah. Um, I would. Um, I started writing also at the same time yeah. during those years, and because I, I felt like if I don't get this thing out, I was going to die. Yeah, the pain was so much, and you couldn't scratch it off. Mm -hmm. You get so for me, it was that. It was like you know my behavior was sort of just changing. Yeah. I looked very different, and that is what they called rebellious. Mm. Um, <laughs> I then I'd, I'd run away from home for a couple of times. Yeah. I was suicidal as well. Right. Um, at 16, and uh, you know, ran away from home also just for that purpose, to want just to take my life yeah. away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was those, and and as I grew up, yeah. the coping mechanisms changed as well. Mm. Just from the simple fact that I hadn't solved or dealt with the root of what was going on within me, also yeah. because I didn't understand it. Mm. So it's taken me something like 15 years wow. to really even just get, because I had a third uh, bout of depression yeah. when I was 29 years old. This mm. is in 2017. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I remember just telling myself, yeah. if I don't understand this thing, it's yeah. going to take me out next time. It is. So yeah. that's when I started getting like finding information about, you know, what is this thing? What is yeah. depression? What is yeah, you know, reading suicidal ideation yeah, right. and all that? So yeah. that's why I do what I do now. Okay. Uh, Marin, let me just rope you in. And even um, just from your experience um, and practicing as a psychologist, uh, what are the various ways that the youth will express themselves if they're depressed that you have actually seen? How are these things manifesting? Okay. Well, um, when the youth are depressed, yeah. they tend to live in isolation. Mm -hmm. They don't maintain friends. Yeah. They are angry. Mm -hmm. uh, they have got this uh, emotional instability. You know, sometimes um, they, they are perceived to be rude. Yeah. Even when you ask them something, the way they answer back, yes. uh, it's because they are upset. It's, mm -hmm. it's not that mm -hmm. it, it's their intention. Right. You know, they are going through this emotional turmoil. Mm -hmm. Uh, they tend to stay away even from the family and friends. Yeah. So you find you go into the house, 
mm -hmm. they are in locked up somewhere. Yeah. Either they are playing their music or mm -hmm. you know playing games or mm -hmm. listening to something or reading mm -hmm. or they are just sleeping. You know, there's this tiredness. Yeah. Either they sleep too much. Yeah. Or they sleep too little. Why well, do you, know, do you mm -hmm. know of extreme cases now? You've talked. Mm -hmm. She's talked about those who can actually be mm -hmm. complete introverts, just mm -hmm. locking themselves up. Mm -hmm. Now, on the flip side, <laughs> yes. Or oh, what's on the other <laughs> side? <laughs> yes, uh, actually, yeah. there's someone who said, um, "Be." It's. I think it's a quote that says, "Make yeah. sure you check out." on um, your friends who went quiet yeah. and also your friends who are all of a sudden so happy about life. Yes. Um, wow. All, um, I nev I, I'm an introvert. Okay, yeah. not me. Mm. I'm not an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> so be concerned when I yeah. go quiet. Yeah. Um, if someone is really quiet and just, just yeah. held back, then all of a sudden, She's the party. She's yes. the party girl. She's yeah. the one checking up on everyone. The just so happy yes. about life. Yeah. And then they, there's a problem because mm. some some of the times is that they are in denial. Yeah. And they're really trying to make an act so yes. that you don't see exactly what's happening. Yes. And now the, the 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 thing about that is they're actually revealing what's happening. Right. But now if you don't know, you mm. might just say, oh, this, they're just happy. Yeah. They're just happy. All of a sudden, maybe they found the meaning of life, and now mm -hmm. they're living life to the mm -hmm. fullest. Shocking. But really, if you you are keen to see then you will see there's some there's something that is yeah. brewing inside of them i've had i've heard sorry but um, i've heard of of people um using drugs alcohol yes mm. when they're depressed yes just to deal with the pain to mask mm. to mask problems. the pain yes mm. i've never okay let me say i've rarely or hardly thought about the idea of using sex as a tool to mm. escape your problems yes mm. there's a video that I believe um, either you produced or that's out there. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that. Um, that says, I thought having a lot of sex would cure my depression. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And young guys don't like talking about this stuff. Are you serious? So, so you jumping stuff. in a relationship or moving from one partner to another partner is your way, was a coping mechanism. Yeah. And it's because of the high it comes. Same thing with alcohol. It's mm. that high, temporary high yeah. that sex gives you and yeah. temporary high that drugs and alcohol gives you. Wow. So you feel like you're, you're in a good place. And mm. then the next moment you're back where you started and then you look for it again and look mm. for it again. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't stop until you actually say, okay, I need to do something about this. Right. And that was me mm. because the coping mechanisms kept yeah. changing with time. Yeah. Mm. And so I couldn't know how to keep healthy relationships. Mm. Either wow. I felt people don't understand me yeah. or I don't understand them mm -hmm. or I didn't feel safe around them. Yes. So it was very difficult for me to even explain myself. I didn't have a language for this thing. Yes. So so until I got the language, the awareness, mm. now I went to prevention, yes. right? Because from there I could tell, okay, if I continue with this, I could end up here. Right. But these are the effects of what I've been doing for the last, say, five years. Right. You get? Yeah. Um, and also, I did not have the idea of what a healthy relationship looks like. Right. True. I'm not grown up in one. I yeah, don't know so you don't know how don't know. Yeah, people yeah. are supposed to relate. Yeah. Right. I didn't have a model to say, oh, my mom and dad, blah, blah, blah. Or my uncle and aunt, blah, blah. I didn't have those people. Right. I didn't even see it in church. It oh, wasn't there, geez, yeah. you know. So this is a young man who's mm. growing up in a very fast-changing world, yeah. and people do not really get. Even you yourself, you don't really get what's happening inside you. Yes. And for some for some time there, I mm. thought, okay, maybe this sex thing is gonna be my way out. Yes. And also because when you're doing it, you do not know it's a coping mechanism. Mm. In the beginning, I didn't mm. know. So it gets to a place I'm like. Am, am I normal? <laughs> is this yeah. even normal? Is this normal? Do right. people do this stuff? <laughs> yeah. Can do it? You yeah, know? Like, it's a bit too much. And people fear, yeah, yeah. people fear talking about these things. True. Also right. because in the world of masculinity and mm. patriarchy, you know, yeah. when a man is having a lot of sex, it means, you know, you're, you're a good you're person. When you don't do my yeah, yeah. You know, you're the man, you're yeah. all these kind of things. Yeah. So it's very easy to get masked in all that conversation mm -hmm. because your society is actually supporting what you're doing absolutely you yeah get? yeah so it's very easy to you know continue with that trend before you know it you're actually so lost in a world mm -hmm. that you do not know how to get out of that's mm. true yeah. Yeah. wow that's did you hear that yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that, that's that's very key mm. and that's very important because mm. okay they take okay when people are depressed yes you know they they tend to mask that depression by right acting out certain things mm -hmm. uh, like what he has said okay there is drugs there's alcohol 
and there's overindulgence, even yeah. in food. Food, yeah. Yeah. yeah? So, there's eating disorder. Right. Either you eat too much or too little. Mm -hmm. Or you eat too much, then you vomit. Yeah. yeah? Like we call uh, bulimia, bulimia yeah. nervosa. Yeah. Uh, you know. So when these things happen, they're just trying to mask mm -hmm. what they are going through. Yes, sex is very important important yes. so they get into this risky behavior right right yeah they, they get into mm -hmm. um, too much sex yeah they don't care even whom they're having that sex with right and sex is used as a catharsis mm -hmm. to release mm -hmm. the emotional toxins mm -hmm. you know to release that energy that yeah. you know that bad feeling right. that somebody is having so when we go back to what the mental health um, is all about yeah it's emotional psychological and social mm. It affects how you feel, yeah. how you're thinking, right. then how you're acting. Mm -hmm. So those risky behaviors yeah. predisposes yeah. the young uh, persons to even contracting uh, diseases, of course. sexually transmitted yeah. uh, diseases. And, yeah. you know. and let's talk a little bit about this title mm -hmm. called Rebellious. And I want you <laughs> <laughs> to actually call out our parents who are watching today. Yes. Yes. The fact that you just label someone rebellious without even understanding what's going mm. on. Right. I mean, when we perceive the young person as rebellious, they're trying to find themselves. Right. Yeah. There's something they're experiencing mm -hmm. that is making them behave that way. Yeah. So parents, we need to look out for this behavior. Right. Why are they behaving that way? It's because of the feelings they are going through. Right. What they are thinking mm. makes them now want to create their space it's true yeah and they it's want true. to be rebellious yeah. you tell them don't go out they'll go out mm -hmm. you tell them don't come back late they'll come back at 2 a.m and knock on your very door yes <laughs> you know and as they are growing yeah. they're also trying to to find themselves right right because so they're transiting yeah. from adolescent mm -hmm. to young adults to yeah. the youth and then to the full-grown adults. Right. So parents need to understand what has brought this behavior change. Mm -hmm. And instead say, of attacking it, exactly, try to understand Find it. out the cause. Yeah. Because now we are seeing the effect, yes. which is the rebellion. Mm. Then we lock them in, mm. we give them prescriptions, yeah. we deny them certain things, right. and we make the situation worse. Mm. Exactly. They bolt out, yeah. they'll run away from home. Right. They'll go and live with those friends who feel who, who they, they can, they can with. identify yes. with. Yes. Friends who will show them love and affection. Yes. You see? So as parents, we need to, to be empathetic mm -hmm. That's to, the word. To, to our children. Yeah. Okay. We need to understand right. that developmental stage. Because yeah. a lot is going on. Okay. You no know, friends, relationships, yeah. Yeah. Uh, socioeconomic, yeah. culture, yeah. religion. They are bombarded with very many things. And why well, let me just even drop you in, just as an extension before we move on to um, the next point. Yeah. Um, even in regards from the way women will express themselves mm. when they are not complete mm. um as a lady have you mm. seen this even with your friends that mm. yes he's talked about it from a guy's perspective mm. and I, I think that's very brave mm. but ladies who mm. just can't sit still mm. and are dating and are perhaps what people will call promiscuous yes um that is actually what happens you know, and she's like, oh that chick is loose oh mm. she's loose but by the way, she's just looking for love in all the wrong places, true, isn't true. it? Mm. And mostly, most, mostly what you will find is uh, the lack of a father figure in yes. their lives. Mm. So what will happen mm -hmm. is that you go looking for your father in all these men. Right. That affirmation that mm. your father is supposed to give you, that yeah. love that your father is supposed to give you, right. you go looking for it in all these men. Yeah. But then you realize deep inside you don't even know who you are. That mm. identity crisis yeah. is one of the things that really pushes women to try and... I think what happens yeah. with all these behaviors is that you're trying to fill a void that is deep inside. It's true. And people are wondering, why do we have such a huge sponsor, exactly. sponsor culture? Exactly. A lot of these girls will say, oh, I'm dating this 50-year-old exactly. because he's, I, I never had a dad. And so he so treats me. Basically, I'm dating my dad. Yeah. I'm looking for a father in yeah. him. Yeah. Right. And sometimes you don't really understand until, until you sit down. Yeah. And you're like, ah. So sometimes you observe the trends of even the people that you have dated, the people you've been with, yeah. and you realize either you're dating your father right. or you're dating someone who's the contract opposite yes. of your father. That's true. Maybe if there was a lot of violence, someone, mm. uh, someone once said something that made me really think. Yeah. Uh, she grew up in a very violent home, yeah. and then she realized, um, looking at the trend, she was always looking for tall, dark, strong, handsome. Yes. And now looking at it is that she was looking for protection. Mm-hmm. 
and, and she was looking for it in all these people. Right. Other people just tend to, uh, because they don't know anything different, right. you end up even being in abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. And all okay. these things are just coping mechanisms. They're just showing, uh, mm. pointing to something deeper. Yeah. It will either be sex, it will be food, yeah. it will be alcohol, yeah. it will be um, shopping, right. it will be whatever. Yeah. But okay. you, you're, you're really trying to... Get satisfaction. Yes, to yeah, get that really satisfaction. Yeah. And, and, and until you deal with the cause, he yeah. said, you look for anything. Okay. Whatever it is. That's but that, true. the cause now is what you have to sit down to and yeah. look inside, which okay. is one of the very most difficult and things. And that's what right. comfort-seeking behavior. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So um, as we're now progressing towards solutions very quickly, I just want to sample a couple of text messages. Um, Haki Mwari goes on to say lack of job opportunities. And by the time you're 18 years old, nobody wants to see or listen. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicodemus goes on to say the so-called role models are not morally up to date. Take, uh, for instance, the leaders who are always on the media over one scandal and the next. Are they the people we're actually supposed to look up to? Okay. Um, uh, for an, uh, I can see Peter here goes on to say idleness and peer pressure. Kangara also adds on anxiety and peer pressure groups is what is causing depression amongst the youth. And uh, Chariot also goes on to use employment as one of the reasons yes. and lack of employment that mm -hmm. is as one of the causes of depression. So um, as we're winding down, let's just talk about solutions. Number one, you've mm -hmm. got a fantastic foundation and initiative going on. Very quickly, Wairimo, because we literally have five minutes uh, what does your foundation do uh, so uh foundation is called art heal foundation yeah and it's basically that art and heal yeah i discovered through my journey even as i was um dealing with all these things mm -hmm. art is one of the things that really helped uh, i started writing poetry yeah. and i realized with time as i interacted with my content mm -hmm. as i sharing out the pain that i was going through it yes. became lesser and lesser painful mm -hmm. and i realized there's so much potential in being uh, able to give people coping yeah. mechanisms mm -hmm. so i'm like i can write mm -hmm. he can write mm -hmm. you can paint yeah. you can dance you can sing yeah. so how about giving young people coping positive mechanisms right uh, because now they're negative and coping yes. now how about encouraging young people mm. to lean towards the, the positive, positive yeah. coping mechanisms right. and at the same time even as you cope can we give you an opportunity to create awareness through yeah. art you know what i like about this it's yeah. not an older person telling young people uh, what to do it's yeah. a young person telling her friend and her peers yes, yes. come let's do this together yeah. i love it Thank you. <laughs> onyango yes. as an advocate uh what do you actually want to tell the young people who are watching today who are just feeling like by the way you know what this life i really can't deal i can't um, um i work with a, mm. a trauma healing organization right. it's called green street network mm -hmm. and in within it we encourage storytelling right as a way of just stepping out of that dark zone mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. because the silence the silence is killing us yeah young people are dying because of of just silence nobody is listening like somebody has mentioned yeah and so for me it's even though you may not know where to start mm -hmm. start with your story yes your story is what's gonna start your healing journey mm -hmm. then it's gonna that's what happened to me right i kept being curious mm -hmm. like let me say it, hit, say it here, say it there, say it there. Yeah. I never knew I was going to meet psychologists ever in my life. Or <laughs> he is I didn't one even know today. they existed. <laughs> you know? yes. But I, I just wanted my story out there. Yeah. That's the reason you even see me today. Mm -hmm. right. Fantastic. So tell your story. Okay, tell yes. your story. Uh, Marin, as we are winding down, um, your final uh, message. Um, even to parents and just, you know, trying to um, cultivate that culture, that relationship at home. Yes. Uh, where do we begin? Give us some homework this morning. Okay. As parents, we are the first um, social uh, role models. Mm -hmm. It's in the home setup that we work with our children. We need to understand. We need to listen mm. to what they are going through. Yeah. We need to understand their emotions. Mm -hmm. We need to understand... Uh, their, their, their feelings and mm. you know their behavior yeah when there is that behavior change mm. we should not be quick to condemn mm. we should not be quick to to send negative signals right we should be there for them we should understand them mm -hmm. we are the role models yeah and even if we say we've been through there no mm -hmm. the younger generation today they are going through a lot right they are exposed a lot right so you know we don't want to cause a state of confusion mm -hmm. we are there to guide them yeah we are there to support them mm -hmm. and as parents first and foremost we need to be aware mm -hmm. of what the young people are going through okay and these young people will start from 
childhood. Right. The adolescents, you know, the adolescents are suffering the most, yeah. unfortunately, in, mm -hmm. in, in our social setup today. And we must be there to support them. Right. Identify what they are going through. Okay. Create that awareness. Yes. Have uh, discussions like this yes. so that we are able to um, support right. those who are out there. I know there are so many people who are suffering. Yeah. Yeah. They have nowhere to go to. And a lot of parents are trying and, to and um, parents, hide their right. rebellious and, children. They don't exactly. want to show people that by the way my child is yes. having an issue. Mm. We tend to hide them and yes. we tend to close them in. Now, as parents, I, I really want to talk to the parents. Yes, we really, really yeah. need mm. to be there for the young people. Okay. We need to create space for them okay. and understand them. All right. Yes. And speaking about spaces, um, if you are just feeling some type of way and feel that, by the way, I need a way to just release and talk to someone, what I love about this panel today is that our guests here are well around that age group by the way if you are young you're creative talk to someone who is your peer for example Wairimo Onyango are actually here and they've created safe spaces and I believe mm. it's it's an easy access yes um you know place right yeah, actually on social media, on so social media. Can reach us. okay all right yeah. so once again um just spell it out it's art therapy a r t uh -huh. heal mm -hmm. art heal foundation yeah, on art uh, heal, instagram yeah. facebook and mm -hmm. twitter you can just reach out to us and then now uh, what we do is um we we also are able to link them up with people who can actually support Okay. Onyango, how can they reach you? Uh, just Google Onyango Tieno. <laughs> yeah. My bald head will be there. <laughs> <laughs> the man with the double O's. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I want to say a big thank you for taking time to be with us this morning. Uh, psychologist Marin Chunga here with us. Uh, Emily Wairimo, the founder of Art Hill Foundation. And of course, Onyango Otieno, double O. <laughs> a mental health advocate here with us this morning just talking a little bit about depression and most importantly what we can do to save more lives out there if you enjoyed this conversation if you feel that you would like to reach out to any one of our panelists right here on the show get in touch with us we'll be happy to at least um, provide you with those contact details that being said uh, we've come to the end of the show on behalf of Paul Mbuvi Jeff Morte and myself Shiko Kaitani and of course the entire Alpha Jury team thanks Thanks for watching. We'll see you bright and early from 6 a.m. right here on K24. Have a blessed day.